Um, okay, it looks like we're <laughs> it looks like you know, we're live. I really like the I'm clicking the live button over here like a dork. You, you see it right there. <laughs> I was looking at it. Anyways. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, we're passing up. Okay, uh, so wanted to welcome everybody to join us uh, this evening. And again, um, if you have any questions for us, go ahead and leave them in the chat. Um, we're going to try to get to as many of your comments tonight as possible. Um, we usually get between like five or 600. So we try to get to everybody. And if there's a question that you have, uh, please feel free to go ahead and send that question multiple times. Uh, sometimes it just gets caught up in the, in the comments. Um, but tonight we're going to be going over uh, some uh, learning tips and some strategies to make the learning process a little bit easier. And I'll be sharing with you a couple of my favorite books as far as um, how to really um, lower the barrier of uh, learning another language. Um, and so I'll be sharing a couple of books that can really help with that. And also um, in the past couple of weeks, we've been doing um, a receptive practice like fingerspelling practice. And then last week we did uh, numbers. And so every 10 minutes, we're going to be showing a sign this time instead of fingerspelling a name or showing a number. Uh, so we're going to be showing an animal sign. So, that, so if you're the first person to uh, answer correctly what that animal sign was, um, then we'll be giving away, again, a free access to our next workshop, um, which will be taking place not this Friday, but next Friday at uh, 5 o'clock PM Pacific time. Um, and we'll be going over how you can improve your receptive skills. And <laughs> I see a lot of people just uh, coming in really quick. Uh, Ether and Casey Hollander, uh, Mitzi, Barbara, uh, Cindy, uh, Raylan, uh, and uh, Taylor. I'm glad that, to see everybody joining us this evening. And again, we're going to be going over some tips. We'll be doing some receptive, receptive practice. And we'll be taking as many uh, questions as we possibly can. Uh, this evening. Uh, so uh, go ahead and let us know um, if you have any questions. Uh, go ahead and, oh, did, did you say there was somebody that dropped a question? There was a question that I wanted to get to oh, right there. Cindy. Um, yeah, so um, there are some really good colleges in, in the area. The one that I think of for that specific area would be um, Fresno State. Uh, Fresno State has a really good um, uh, ASL class setup. They also have a really good ITP program, which is an interpreter training. <laughs> My hands are not doing it tonight. If you're interpreting, I'm not sim calling tonight. I'm not doing it. Okay. Um, an interpreter training program that they have. It's really good. So I would look in if you if you're wanting to take one. Um, I would look into Fresno State. I don't know what Fresno City College offers. I've never really looked into their specific program. I just, I'm more familiar with Fresno State. Um, and then I know in Visalia, we have some uh, ASL classes that are taught by deaf instructors. Uh, I believe Fresno State has the same thing. Um, so yeah, there's a few options um, here around the area. Um, Fresno Pacific. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, Fresno, Fresno Community... Pacific is um, uh, where you can get your teaching credential. Um, so I, I've I I've think... worked with a few teachers that have gotten their credentials from. But did they have the ASL programs there? Uh, uh, Fresno Pacific. I don't know. I want to say yes. Most community colleges have them. I'm just not personally familiar with them specifically. Only. Um, uh, yeah, I think I met one interpreter that came from that program. Um, it is a little more um, independent where it's not, you know, you're going every day uh, to that know. college. Um, but know, it is like, definitely State. something worth um, doing a little more research into. Mm -hmm. um, would you recommend the ASL dictionary book, The Joy of Signing, even though it's older? The Joy of Signing. Let me look that one up really quick. The Joy of Signing. I'm not really 100%. I've, oh, I've seen that okay, one. I've seen it, but I have yet to personally read it. Yeah, I've never read it. Like, we've never read it ourselves. Like, we've never looked at it. So I can't say for, like, 100%, like, yeah, do it. I, I don't know. Um, there are some really good ASL dictionaries out there. Um, but I've never really, like, focused on that one. 
specifically. I don't think I, uh, I've never looked at that one. I definitely read a, a, a lot of different books and it depends on what you're really wanting. Um, if you're wanting something that can be more of a, like a, a, a dictionary. Um, so if you're looking for wanting to build up your vocabulary, um, there's two dictionaries that are produced from Gallaudet and um, there's an adult version and a children's version. Um, and I think we have links to those in the description down below. Um, but those are really like the, the de facto dictionaries that you might want to go to to build up your vocabulary. Um, but if you're wanting to look up things on the, uh, like a reverse lookup, like you would, if I don't know this certain word in Spanish, like, you know, you can look it up in English and it'll give you the Spanish word, but in ASL, it's really hard to like, oh, there's a sign. What does that mean? Um, but there is a reverse, uh, hand, uh, it's called the handshape dictionary. Now let me see if I can get the exact well, he's name. finding that, um, I like, oh, you have it. Uh, yeah, here it is. It's the American Sign Language Handshape, uh, Handshape Dictionary. Uh, it's by Richard A. Uh, Tennant. And I do have a, a link to that one in the description area below. Uh, we have a list of resources um, that are our personal favorites. Um, and that's definitely one of them because it can be a real pain point when you see a sign. Um, and it can be a really great resource to have to be able to do that reverse lookup. Um, and then there's also, you know, um, books that are more uh, aimed at helping you learn a new language. Um, one of my, let's see here, there's uh, Fluent Forever, which I thought was re a really good read. Uh, the Immersion Method is, is a really light read, and it's really helpful. Um, and uh, The Secrets of Polyglots. And I think that the last two were actually free um, on Amazon if you have Kindle Unlimited. And so that's that's something that I subscribe to, and I just I use that and utilize it to read a whole bunch of books to kind of um, help other, you know, be able to you know take in all those different um, books and be able to kind of uh, give people the head people in the right direction. Like I'll read like ten thousand pages a day, like no or uh, a year, no joke. So like I'll read ten thousand pages a year, so you don't have to. <laughs> uh, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, I saw something and I wanted to answer before it disappears. Uh, okay. Ah, there it is. <laughs> well, it's because like it'll like blow up and then I'll lose it forever. Bam, there it is. Would it be appropriate for a hearing person to go to Gallaudet University? Uh, yes, I know quite a few um, hearing people who have gone to Gallaudet and they've graduated. Um, they're professional uh, NIC certified interpreters. Wonderful experience. Um, yeah, I know quite a few people who have gone, graduated, and it's yeah done wonders so absolutely hearing people sorry i should specify that <laughs> i know a lot of deaf who go too but uh i know a lot of hearing people who have gone as well um so yeah absolutely uh there's another question um, th this one i wanted to touch on really quick if a child okay. is deaf and blind uh what can we use to communicate with them uh how to practice um with them to communicate with each other uh, so yeah, there's definitely um, there's a few ways to do this, and it's going to be varying depending on what they what they use. Um, there is um, oh. pro tactile sign language. There's ASL pro tactile sign language, and then there are more rudimentary uh, um, tactile sign languages. Um, and so depending on what it is that they are personally familiar with, will kind of dictate what is used. Um, more recently, pro tactile ASL is is um, being more quickly adopted, and just particularly because it's uh, it's less work. If you're just signing into somebody's hand, so uh, one of the ways is that you have somebody just physically grab onto your hand so they can feel uh, where that is um, in location and uh, and also what the hand shapes are and everything. But if you're the signer, and this is something that we have experience with, um, with a couple of our friends that were deaf and then eventually lost their sight later in life, um, it could be really heavy on on the person that they're holding your hands onto. Um, and so, like if you're doing interpreting, for example, and typically interpreters will team up and they'll maybe do 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, and uh, the one that's not interpreting will actually be there to feed and, and give them any missing information at any given time. Um, but for tactile interpreting, that could, those times tend to be reduced just because it can be more physically exhausting. 
Um, but yeah, um, Protectile and uh, Protectile ASL. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm reading questions. There's a... Yeah, we're having some connection issues. Today, I noticed that. Are you guys weird. noticing? It's like, uh, 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 and this like little thing keeps coming up. Like, oh, you're we're, like, we're we're plugged in through like, Ethernet. Eh, eh, eh. And we have decent connection, um, but I'm up. curious. Maybe it might be the winter Weather. storm. Yeah, like the I know. Somebody asked. Of somebody United asked States if we had right snow here in California. We have some, like where we live near the mountains. Um, it it has snow on it. Where we live, we don't get snow in like our little valley. But um, the mountains are getting snow, but nothing compared to, to uh, back east. Oh my God, I've been watching it on the news. Texas, oh my God, yeah. I feel so horrible. That is bad. That's I like think they, really they bad. Lost power um, for what, three power. days? Yeah, I just saw a picture on the news. Somebody's house inside their ceiling fan had icicles hanging off of it. That's and then like people are not used to that. That kind of like Frozen. I mean, if you live in Alaska, sure, but Texas, come on now. But yeah, um, good grief. Um, Did you see something? I saw something earlier. I'm going to try to find it. Um, this is a pretty oh. good one right here. Okay. Uh, Taylor is asking, is it rude to ask a deaf person to slow down their signing? Um, I can understand, just go slowly. Hmm. Do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, no, there's nothing wrong with asking someone to slow down because when you're learning, I mean, now, I've been involved in sign language a very long time. And I'll tell you, sometimes they're like lightning, poof, and you're like, whoa, wait, wait, my brain can't process it. So if you're like, whoa, whoa, hold on, wait, wait, and you ask them to slow down, that's fine. Like, hey, do you mind? I miss. Do you mind slowing down a little bit? The reason is because it's better to ask them to slow down than to do the fake nod, the, oh, yeah, oh, I get it, yeah, and you, like, lie. They know you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> they will know that you do not understand. So yeah, absolutely. It's okay. Like if they're like going too fast and you're like, whoa, wait, you can say, hey, do you mind slow down a little bit? I missed. And then they'll go back and correct themselves. It's way more polite than just pretending to understand when you really don't. You don't. Yeah. You never want to do that part. Yeah. Never do that. Um, ba -ba -da -ba. Ah, you scroll <laughs> while I'm reading. <laughs> okay, um, I'm actually going to cite a, an animal really quick. Um, we're already at the 12 minute mark. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sign. Oh, right, it's an animal. An animal. Oh, um, stop glitching, I see you. Yeah, glitch is an <laughs> RNG. Like you're glitching, knock it off. So, yeah. um, okay, so it's an animal, and it's one that most people have as pets, just as a hint. Um, and just as a disclaimer or um, just a heads up, uh, sometimes the chat um, is in a different order from what we see to what other people say. Uh, some people were saying that but that might just be an ISP thing or maybe that's just uh, some kind of delay. Um, but when we pick the first person that shows up, it's going to be the first person that shows up on our end because that's what we see. Uh, so anyways, uh, so the sign is. And if you know what like that sign was, really <laughs> let me know uh, what it was in the comments. Waiting for it. Waiting for it. Waiting um, for And this it. is one that can be signed one-handed. Oh, yeah. And there are variations to the sign. But usually, you'll see it like this. Wait. Okay, boom. There it is, right okay. there. Looks like Lori was the first one to get that correct. Uh, we have a lot of... Hand people that Lori. came right in and this is the order that they came up on our end by the way yeah it's like fast so yeah it's everybody like, there's nothing it. there on our end nothing nothing and all of a sudden it goes boom and it's like there's like 50 all together like whoa it's like it's super quick so good job guys yeah um so cat so Wait, okay, wait, so Lori um, was the first one that we saw on our end. So we're going to go ahead and give you free access to our next workshop, which will be next Friday at 5 o'clock. Um, and we'll be discussing how you can improve your receptive skills in ASL. So all you have to do is uh, just send me an email at this email address and just let me know that you won. And um, we'll go ahead and give you the Zoom link and the passcode and everything for that. Uh, workshop next Can you week. Close that window. Not only is this it distracting, one? it's creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark here, and like there this, that window goes to our front, and so like I keep seeing movement, and it's creeping me out. I don't like. Uh, anyways, back to back to the drawing board. There we go. Woo! Okay, 
Awesome. Good job, guys. Good job. Um, wait, okay. Somebody dropped this question twice, oh. and I didn't want I don't want to miss it, but I have to scroll back up through the uh, here we go. Um, here it is. What would be a good online resource for hard of hearing kid to learn ASL? He's 11. So not adult learning and not toddler learning. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Um, as I know what you mean by not toddler learning because of the age, there's like, like, come on, really? I, you know, you just, you know how kids are. The resource that first thing that comes to my mind and the reason why it comes to my mind is because it's so beneficial and you might be familiar with it, but it's called signing time. Now, if you're familiar with that already, signing time, you could say is for young children, but the reason why it's so beneficial and why it's so successful is because of how it's being produced and you, she goes through everything. It's Rachel Coleman. And she goes through everything, numbers, letters, signs, sentences, school signs, uh, travel, uh, good grief. Potty training. Potty training. I mean, well, he's 11, he doesn't do that. But, you know, it well, just I has a <laughs> wide variety. I mean, yeah, she yeah. has a variety. And when we were teaching our daughter, I had, like, the entire set. It was like, and I was like, <laughs> of DVDs. Um, you can find them on YouTube. Like, I know glitch hmm. i know that it's for young kids but it is really helpful youtube also has some really good resources out there um that could be really beneficial you just kind of have to look at what it is that you're you're picking skillshare is another good resource um there's i think what there's three of you guys all together on skillshare um, just for like, like for strictly ASL, ASL there's, um, like three. there's like three, there's, yeah, there's these three basically. people and I don't know, remember these two and then he's on there too. Um, but yeah, honestly, like signing time is one of the, as like, like I said, like as horrible as it seems like, cause you're like, ah, but you know, I could just see an 11 year old boy going really mom, <laughs> you know, but it is really good because it is so it's colorful. It's got music and it's just very engaging. It does help um, with with that. So yeah, that that would be the one that um, that I would I would recommend that. Um, <laughs> wait, there was comment. there's 48 people watching, so why are there not 48 likes? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one I wanted to get to. What is the best way for me to learn sign language to show my twin cousins who have autism and can't speak or hear? Now. Um, I'm very familiar with that topic. Um, there's a lot of students that we know who have um, autism and sign language has, has been very beneficial. It's helped them because it, you know, it's frustrating when they can't communicate and they can't express themselves. And if they're nonverbal, then that's even more frustrating uh, for them. But sign language is a good outlet. So for yourself, um, hold on because I went on my rant and I just forgot what is the best mm. way for me to learn. Okay. Yeah. So for mm. me, um, I'm going to go straight back to that. Um, Rachel Coleman, that signing time, because it, like I said, it's very light. It's engaging. It's, it's fun. Even if you wanted to show your cousins that too, to teach them, it might be something that might spark their interest because of the, the, um, how, colorful and how it has cartoons in it and it's got music and it's just so engaging that would be my suggestion in the beginning is to watch her or watch those signing time videos like i said they're very very basic with the signs that she teaches but it's good a good start especially for younger children to um learn sign language because like i said it, it captivates you when my mom was first learning sign language she loved signing time they have this alphabet song super cute my mom memorized that alphabet song and she'd walk around singing it she's like a is for alex and alligator like she would walk around like because it teaches you glitch do you see this I, thing I see happening it. it's ridiculous it's crazy. does it freeze up on does it glitch for you answer? i mean I'm, it's glitching over here on this one that i'm seeing too so i can only imagine it's glitching for you guys i'm sorry it's got to be this weather thing that's going on but anyways 
that would be my suggestion. Same with uh, YouTube. If you want to go for more like your receptive practice, sign duo, sign with heart. <laughs> Why is it when I do it, like my mind goes, whoop, um, sign duo, sign with heart, ASL that, the daily moth. Wait. ASL Stu, um, ASL Meredith, yes, ASL I know, Meredith, I remember that. Bill Vickers, there's of a, course. There's a lot of good resources like on YouTube that you could watch to mm -hmm. help with your receptive um, part of, of sign language as well. Yeah, and we have um, like a resources page uh, on the website. So if you go to aslbasics.com, um, on near the top, there's a section called free resources. And on there, we have a list of like different YouTube channels. Um, and just different videos, uh, dictionaries, books, and all kinds of different things. Uh, so that can be really helpful too if you're just getting started. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Dad. Hello. Yep, <laughs> she got it. Your dad's here. I'm like, yeah. Hi, Dad. Um, oh, okay. So here's one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are there any signs for specific kinds of? Is that Oh, candy. That caught your eye too. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> nothing really comes nothing to mind. Nothing that I can like, think of. Like, of oh, yeah, or, that. Top of your what? Top of my bed. <laughs> so, so I got like two hours of sleep last night. So I'm not firing <laughs> yeah, it all so It wasn't the best night for him. But um, I can't like think of any like right off the bat. Like, oh, yeah, that's how you would sign Snickers or Skittles. So there's like chocolate. There's yeah, cake. There's vanilla. There's candy, um, but like, but like the Snickers specifics. and Skittles, like usually they're not that I've um, seen. There's probably some there, but not that I've seen. Um, wait, 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 wait. Where is it? Where was it? Oh, here's a fun one. How long did it take you to learn sign? <laughs> I know we get that question a lot. Now, when we were learning sign language, this was, um, we dedicated a lot of time to it. Uh, for example, we started learning at the exact same time his parents started learning. We were all in the same class. His mom got frustrated because we were progressing faster in the language than they were. And she didn't understand why. Why? And the reason why is because we dove like head mm, mm, into the language. We associated with our teachers outside of class. Um, we associated immediately with the deaf. We threw ourselves out there more so than his parents did initially. I say it took six months to be able to have a, a conversation and to feel somewhat comfortable. It took a year for me to be able to sit and watch something in full sign and get a grasp of what was going on. By the second year mark, I had it. Um, I was able to, I could talk to you. I could watch it. And I, was doing pretty good. I think he was about the same. So it just kind of depends on how much time and energy you put into it and the dedication you have to it. Anybody can learn. How quickly you want to learn will depend on how much time you put into the language itself. Um, putting yourself out there and, uh, you know, outside of your comfort zone. Are you um, socializing with the deaf? I know with COVID, it makes things complicated. And so that's kind of a hiccup that we're getting with a lot of people where they're like, I can't socialize because of COVID. I know. I know. Um, hopefully there's a light at the end of that COVID tunnel <laughs> with everything going on. So hopefully soon. But my advice to you would be that socialize with the deaf as much as possible. Don't be afraid to sign what you know. I know it can be scary. I know you're like, but what if I mess up? Then you mess up. You're best teacher is your mistakes you learn the most when you're when you make mistakes believe you me i have plenty of stories to tell you my own personal experiences but some are friends who like made mistakes <laughs> and it's like it's funny but let me tell you never made that mistake again and so just really putting yourself out there as much as you can is going to really help speed up the language learning process he has a few books that he likes to um talk about that helps with um, that helps with that. I'll let him talk about those books because. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, there, there's actually two books that I wanted to touch on tonight, but before I do, oh, um, we're at the 20 me. minute mark. So we're going to do the second animal sign. Okay. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I just kind of want to wait. Uh, 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 I'm going through your comments really fast. Cause it went. Brrr. 
Um, okay. While you go through the comments, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the okay, go ahead. sign. So here it is. What animal is this? And again, this is one that can be done one-handed. It's going to blow up right when it's I'm reading it. I'm going to be like, no. Um, okay, that's okay. That question. It's blowing up. Yeah. All right, can um what's happening over on the side wait 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 okay hold on okay i'm gonna give it to two people it blew up right now i'm gonna give it to two people because they're both right they're both right <laughs> so leslie yes so bull so cow or bull i've also seen bull like mm -hmm. this and then Barbara, because you were the one who's, who said cow. Uh, a lot of times if people were, if like, um, when most people, when they saw this, they thought cow, but Leslie's right, bull. You'll see bull and you'll see bull. It just kind of depends on the preference. So there's a reason why I wanted to give it to both because you were both correct. And they're kind of the same thing anyway. And they're, <laughs> In a sense, yes. It's a giant cow. It's a cow. Cow is a cow. Um, but yeah. So, oh, email. I'm working on it. Working on it. Working on it. Um, but yeah. So, bull or bull, cow. I've never seen this for cow. Have you seen this for cow to symbolize a cow? I don't think no. I've seen it. But I've seen bull and I've seen other people sign bull like that as well. Context. I'll tell you right now. If you were to sign bull and utilize it as bull, context um okay um so back to the the two books so the first book that i wanted to mention is uh, called autodidactic and yeah. so this is one yeah, you'll have to well you, you can sign it as like a, a self-learner because <laughs> basically self the but word autodidactic means that you know. are a self-learner um but basically this is um, a book written by james uh, patterson i think it was um and he goes, he talks about how he learned uh, Spanish. And so he was, he had a missionary um, uh, tour like for two or three years. And he went to, I think it was Argentina. Um, and basically he um, didn't know any Spanish when he went there, but he brought a, a blank uh, notebook with them. And he had, you know, a, a dictionary and a, that go, went both ways. And so he really took the learning upon himself and um you know every day he was writing into that notebook and, and he was having those conversations with people and in an incredibly short amount of time he went from you know speaking like a toddler to speaking at a college level i think within about two years and this is somebody that really um took that learning into his own hands and the reason why i mentioned that is because a lot of times um the way we approach le learning a new language is we want to take it as a class right and most most of the time it's a college class and so it's uh, maybe you meet once maybe twice a week for an hour and that's it so you're basically letting somebody else um tell you at the rate at which you learn that language um but if you can become more autodidactic and you really um get into the habit of uh, looking things up for yourself you know a lot of times we'll just wait for somebody to tell us okay, this week we're going to be learning these 25 signs. This week we're going to learn about topic common. This week we're going to learn about subject, object, verb. And we're kind of just waiting to be fed. Um, but again, if we can take that into our own, um, uh, into our own abilities and to really, you know, be motivated and self-motivated. And, you know, if we don't understand something, you know, just go ahead and do a little detective work. Uh, don't be afraid to do a little personal research. Um, if you don't know how to sign something, you know, look it up on Google, maybe cross reference it within with, between a dictionary and see what kind of videos you can pull up. And, um, you know, again, like Johnny was mentioning, really becoming involved within the deaf community and um, really putting yourself out there and doing all of those things is going to really expedite the entire language learning process. And, um, yeah, so it's a, it's not a heavy read at all. It's it's maybe only a hundred and something pages long, and um, yeah, if you can kind of change your mindset to become more autodidactic, become a, a more self learner, then that's going to go a long ways. Um, 
Should I go into the second book? Um, hold on. I'm getting questions, and somebody asked, um, where did it go? This person asked, like, Matt or Jim, three times. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was the glossy one. Oh, glossy J one. I said James Patterson. Oh. Um, I think it was Parkinson. Let me, I'm going to go ahead and look it up really quick. Go ahead and find the comment that you wanted. Um, can you explain, could you explain glossing? For example, how would you sign, I saw a black cat in my yard this morning? Glossing. Glossing. It, it is James Parkinson. It, my bad. Glossing is, I'm trying to think of the, the phrase, um, to each their own. Glossing is different for everybody. My form of glossing wouldn't be the same as his form of glossing. So are you referring to um, grammar, like how you would structuralize that? Like if I was going to sign it in ASL grammar, you do look red. Um, where to go, where to go, where to go? Uh-oh. Here we go. What'd you find? Um, I really got to get more physical copies, but this is, let me just show you an example of what glossing looks like on paper. Oh, uh, while you're doing that, math, M's, mm -hmm. math, and gym with G's, gym, like exercise, but with G's, gym. Gotcha. How to sign cannot. You can do cannot, okay. but it's normally just like, I can't. I can't do it. This, this is a good example. Hopefully it shows up on camera. Uh, oh. This one over. Oh, boy. Here we oh, go. Oh, man, I can't, even see the, I can't even see the screen. I don't even know what you're doing. Which one? Where? Uh, okay. Me enjoy. Uh, hopefully it's mirrored so you can actually read the text. Uh, me learn ASL Y. Me enjoy. Joy. Oh, this one. Am I reading that right? I don't know. Uh, me I learn don't know. and then FS dash ASLY, me enjoy me. Uh, so that's basically like how you would take an ASL sentence and basically put it into a uh, written format. Um, and so there is a system to where you can do that, and it's very detailed. So if you want to um, learn a little bit more about what that is, this is actually a really good resource. Uh, master ASL and uh, they have an entire section on glossing um, and the way they describe it in the book here it says designed to develop a basic familiarity with the glossing notation system used to transcribe ASL into English and so that section uh, covers a wide range of glossing conventions that students often encounter in ASL and linguistic courses each convention is fully explained and includes illustrated examples to develop glossing skills, like the picture that we just uh, showed. And then there's other uh, exercises in there as well. Um, so you could get into the technical glossing, um, although my recommendation is to kind of create your own system. And I don't mean that as far as like, I'm gonna create my own grammar or anything. What I mean is, um, Basically, you're taking ASL and you're putting it on paper. And so this can be really beneficial for you if you have like a lecture or maybe you have a discourse or maybe you're teaching a class and or um, you just need to get something down on paper and you want to sign it just so. Um, so um, like one example, like um, I'll, I'll draw like um, Earth and I'll just have the letter E and I'll draw a circle around it and that will be earth. Or I'll put a P and then a circle around it and that is planet. Or I'll have two circles connected to each other and that uh, can indicate relationship or interconnection. Um, See, I and don't do like that. having so like, wow, arrows, wow. like, you know, these are things that make it really uh, simple for me. Like I can have a half hour discourse in ASL condensed into a three by five index card. Um, just because I can really, um, you know, uh, no joke. Condense it. it. Yeah, maybe one of these days I'll I'll, I'll show it to you. But like um, being able to condense and um, be I don't know, be creative. If you can inject any kind of creativity into what you're doing, it's going to not only help you learn faster, but it's actually going to help your memory retention as well. Sorry, I'm reading. Mm -hmm. Uh. Hold on. That's cool. Unless I have that. Wait, wait, wait. I think. I like your. I like your statement. 
Um, I think learning, you know, sign language must be necessary in school because we have to be able to communicate with everyone. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, um, high schools offer, you know, like, oh, yeah, you, you know, you can take Spanish, you can take French, and I think there's some other ones. But ASL is never offered in, in and at least not in any of the high schools that I know of. They have an ASL club, but like like they where they teach ASL at the high school level, I've never seen, and it would be so beneficial to do that. I think I've seen some teachers like in the uh, elementary school, if they have a deaf student, they'll try to like learn a little bit and the class will try to learn a little bit. But I think it'd be really good if they took up that opportunity and went ahead and like taught ASL because, you know, that's uh, it's needed. It's like really needed. Um, I saw another question. Where did it go? Um, just wanted to highlight these really quick. Uh, Sammy Jade was saying hi. I appreciate you guys. Hey. Uh, and Okina was saying same. <laughs> um, and then I think this was in response to Lynn Parsons. So Lynn Parsons was saying, I've been trying to learn ASL for years, but often lose it because I don't have anyone in the deaf community to speak with and practice with. Um, at what point do you put yourself out there to try and make mistakes? Immediately. And I, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want you to like go out there with the goal to make mistakes. Like, you know what I mean? But the sooner you put yourself out there and you're like, here I am, the better it's going to be for you because you're going to be able to get over that hurdle of the fear that I don't want to do it because I'm scared. We all have that feeling. And the sooner you can master that, the better it's, it's going to be, but I would say right away, as much as quickly as you can, outside of COVID, but as quickly as you can, and to to do the best that you can, because that's going to be very helpful. Is learning from those mistakes, just boom, boom, like do it as quickly as you can. Okay, this shirt, I keep reading my own shirt <laughs> <laughs> because I'm reading my shirt and it says progress over perfection. But it doesn't say perfection. It says perfection because the R is not supposed to be there. That's the point of the shirt, right? But it's throwing me off. Every time I see my own shirt, I'm like, perfection, perfection. I keep saying perfection in my head. Perfection. Oh, God. But I'm like, I keep looking at my shirt. I'm like, uh, mm. I had somebody else point that out to me like, uh, do you know your shirt is like spelled wrong and i'm like that's the point. the point we recently changed the shirts there you can get this <laughs> one but the other one that we have has the a little um the little carrot and it's an r an orange r that's kind of like hanging off like ah you know but <laughs> uh... my shirt keeps throwing me off i'm like stop being misspelt <laughs> anyways um oh i saw somebody else's question oh uh that one. This one? That one. How do you sign contractions like don't, won't, haven't, etc.? Oh man, we just had a workshop on this. We did at work. We just had like <laughs> this big old like thing about it. Go for it. Um, okay, so I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm actually gonna thing. scroll up to this one. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. Uh, somebody said, How do you sign cannot? And that's actually a really perfect example of contractions. Um, so and, you know, yeah. can't right can not um so they have the exact same meaning but they're kind of structured differently and so um the reason why we're having this discussion is because we uh, have some deaf uh, students at a college that we work at um, and they're taking an english as a second language class and so um if you're unfamiliar asl has a very separate grammar and a very separate syntax compared to english and there's actually a lot of things that are just omitted in ASL. And you might, um, you know, if you ask, oh, what is your name? You know, you're saying you name what you, right? And, I don't say you. I say or you your name I'm what. Like, you and name what you. I'm like, the you. So there's a few different um, ways of asking a simple question like that. But anyways, that is gets omitted, right? And so same thing with are and were and was. And so, um, if you're taking English as a second language as a deaf student, you want to learn that stuff because you need to, you know, write for, for these college uh, essays and you have to, uh, or at least you're wanting to be more uh, um, a part of, um, you know, maybe you want to become a better writer so you can get a better job or, or whatever the case may be. 
Um, you know, they have lots of different reasons why they want to learn English. But if that's the goal, you're going to have to start, um, you know, using those kinds of uh, things. And do you say um, won't, like W-O-N apostrophe T? Or do you say, you know, uh, or do you just do won't and omit the apostrophe? And so, like, those are kind of the things that you might have to discuss with that particular person. Is that what they want? Do you want the apostrophe or do you oh, want? Oh, like if, if your fingers, there's a sign for won't and that's this. Like, <laughs> I won't do it. That's why. But yeah. if, yeah, if you're, mm, well, hold on. This person's question was how do you sign those words? So like won't is like this. It's like well, a, I think it was won't. how do you sign contractions? But yeah, but she gave an example. Yeah. Like how do you don't, sign contractions, won't have it. Like, so there don't. are like, don't, don't won't, won't like refuse won't do it not gonna do it haven't don't can, do it what, what is it so haven't. the next one was haven't so that one could be really dependent I, upon how you're using it in a sentence i would do have it or you know, I would not yet haven't. like i haven't gone to the movies yet like movies me go not yet yeah i haven't right or you can say like i don't have that you know uh, uh you know three cats well, I have, but like maybe <laughs> a, a donkey, so I not have. Disdain. <laughs> speaking of animals. Um, speaking of animals. Speaking of animals. What about animals? Oh, yeah. We got to do the third animal. Um, okay, so really quick. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and sign it. What animal is that? Can we have a two-handed sign, too. What's that? Can we have a two-handed sign, too? It can be a two-handed sign, too. Okay, here we go. So if you know what that sign is, just uh, throw it in the chat. And you for the first one, then uh, we'll give you free access to our next workshop. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Man, there it goes. <clears throat> there it is. Oh, that one's actually really close. Boom. Good job. Horse. Horse. Yeah, so one-handed or two-handed. And you might notice, like, a lot of these start as two-handed signs, but a lot of people um, get more it, casual it, with it. That's a nice word, casual. I always say lazy. <laughs> But it's more casual, yeah. It's like the, the teacher, and then eventually it becomes teacher. teacher. And if you've been signing it a long time, it's just... Same teacher. with student. It's supposed to be Learn learning person. person, but student. Um, <laughs> uh, JK said rabbit. That's actually really close. So um, horse goes this way, and then one of the versions of rabbit goes like this. Another one is like this. My thumbs stick out when I do it. That's funny. Um, I didn't notice that. It's an accent. How you do it a little different. Because I do rabbit, he does rabbit. Uh, moose. Moose. <laughs> Wait, I'm out of camera. Moose. It's, it's a big sign. It's, a, it's got the antlers, man. Boom. Yeah, moose. Uh, did you already say uh, to email like, us? Like, like, like. Oh, no, not yet. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and send us an email. He'll drop that email in there again. Oops. There it is. That's go it. ahead and email us. Let us know that you won. And then we'll get you all set up with the workshop. Okay. Um, um, we were in the middle of talking about something. Contractions. Oh, this is actually a good one really quick, too. Uh, Monica saying, storing all of these different ways in my vocabulary. Thing. Oh, yeah. Um, and that kind of leads into, um, like, I was working with a student um, today, and um, I think he was in fifth grade. But anyways, there, there's a thing. Um, uh, there's a thing called the Fairview program, and uh, what their entire thing is about is teaching um, like a deaf student how to recognize the different semantic meanings of a word and learning the appropriate signs for each. And so like one of them today was fly. And so there's like bird fly, oh or there's God. an airplane plane that's flying, or there your fly is down, or the, the, bug. the, the bug fly. <laughs> and I think there were like I forget there's fly, all of them, but there's there was like fly, nine of them. There's and so sometimes there's fly, multiple. There's fly. <laughs> there's, it is. Pretty fly. For Pretty a fly. Guy. Fly. Like, that's so cool. <laughs> Man, you laugh. Fly. Maybe there is nine of them. It's um, like the same with like run. Run. But, anyways, that, that is something to kind of, you know, build up your bank. Um, and. Yeah, Fairview is something that you'd have to like purchase as a separate thing. But like, if you go on to like Signing Savvy, uh, which is an online ASL dictionary, or Handspeak, a lot of times they'll have multiple variations mm -hmm. included in those dictionaries. And so, you know, you don't have to memorize every single one of them and review every single one of them. But it is good to kind of 
expose yourself to them. So you, when you do see it, you, you can maybe recognize it. Yeah, whoops. The sign for together, mm -hmm. together, it's like with. Yeah, somebody said with, who was it? Yeah, with. Mm -hmm. How do you sign? It's good to be here. I'm happy to be here. So I, if I was, okay. I have, I have to think about how I would sign it. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, I'm like, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's how I do it. Happy here. Yeah, here. Happy here. Um, I know a lot of times people get confused between here and what. Um, here is like you're more, your hands are slightly pointed more down for the direction of the floor. Like here, I am here, here. Where what, and your um, fingers are closed here where what is more open and it's more what? And it kind of goes in line with your facial expressions too. Like me, what I just did, what? And that's that head, my head's in more, I'm looking at you from the corner of my eye. I'm like, what? Or what? You know, and they kind of, but your hands yeah. are more open five and they shake what? Where here is very solid. Here, here, yeah. right here, here, what? Kind of thing. Um, um, oh, how do you sign saying? Well, <laughs> in which context? I'm sorry. I used to hate it when my teacher would tell me that. Give it to me in a sentence. And I'm yeah, like, uh, no. <laughs> Just tell me the sign. Go ahead and give it to us in a sentence. And then when you sign, when you out. say, um, wait, what was the word? Same. 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 So, yeah, when you mean same, like they look the same. I'm so sorry. I used to hate it when my teacher did this. They look the same. I feel the same. <laughs> there's another example, but so I there's like it. same, wait, wait, same, I wanna same. Because I want to answer their question before I like do that to them because that's like horrible. <laughs> so if somebody says I, I did that and would would say, oh, same, oh, yeah, like same. same, like you do, it's two handed one or one handed, or two. but like same, it's a Y, same, like back and forth, you, me, you, me, you, me. What? Okay. Um. We've actually hit the four, 40 minute mark, okay. so we're gonna have to end up. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I wanna do it. I wanna do it. Okay, so go ahead and do this there's, one. Here's the next animal. Mm, typically, you don't have it as pet. <laughs> so, here we go. Ready? <laughs> yeah, they think animals, not pet. Okay, yeah, so it's an animal. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Okay. okay, so we'll wait for those to come in. Um, I wanted to touch on this one really quick. This one? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Oh, where did it go? This one? Um, Hold on. It's blowing up. You just going to have to wait. Boom. Uh, oh, look at it go. It's everywhere. <laughs> hold on. Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Uh. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, okay, so actually, the, the first one on our end is uh, is it ether or ether? Um, but you got the last you, one, I think you got the yeah. first one. Um, um, so the next person, psychic slushy, yeah, okay, awesome, okay. So let's go ahead and throw up the email address. So go ahead and uh, send me an email, let me know that you won, and I'll give you all the information for how to join our next workshop for free. Um, which will be taking place not this Friday, but next Friday at 5 o'clock uh, Pacific time. Oops. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Um, oh, and we are so close to that 50 like mark. Where, oh, um, yeah, check that out. If we get 50 likes for this video, he's going to give away a free... Um, free access to our newest uh, Skillshare. Mm -hmm, the Skillshare. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> My brain's like, no. <laughs> My brain's like, no, we're not going to talk about it. Um, um, so close. And that one's going to be chosen at random, too. Ah, there is a comment, and I can't see it because you're scrolling. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There, there was a com. There was that I want. There's one that I wanted to catch, but... Um, Do you know what I it noticed... was about? Because maybe if you were say what it was about, they might put it back in there. Um... No, sorry. Okay, back to mine. <laughs> I need, I need more sleep. <laughs> I need more sleep. That is true. Um, um, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I won't touch it. Oh, okay. I like this question. Um, I'm a medical. I'm a medical interpreter, 
So I like that question. <laughs> um, uh, how do you tell parents about insurance? So how would how do you sign insurance? Mm -hmm. So insurance is with an I, and it goes back and forth. Beep 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 beep. It's also the same sign for infection. So context is key. So insurance, and what I would do um, as an interpreter, what I do is I'll do insurance card. So that card, that way there's a difference between what I'm doing. So like, yeah, uh, insurance card. Bam, hit 50 hmm. likes. There it is. You two are so adorable. Oh, oh cool. thank you. Okay, okay so, so at, the, at the end, we'll, we'll go ahead end, and pick somebody about, at random. In about five minutes, we'll pick, phew, it'll go at random. Um, okay, uh, Melissa, how's your knee, Chris? Whoa, look who's <laughs> joined the party. Hey, baby. Come here, baby. Um, so somebody was asking about plurals. Um, this is one that I, I saw, but I didn't get a chance to answer really quick. Um, so plurals, um, it kind of depends, and that's going to be an answer for a lot of these things. But um, let's just, um, I'm taking a lot of classes, right, classes. Um, I'm taking a lot of classes. So, you know, you don't have to add an ES or an S to it. Um, the plurals kind of take care of themselves. And ASL, you, the nice thing about it is you really only have to learn the root sign for the root word uh, in most cases. Like, you know, past tense, future tense. Uh, there's no ings and there's no eds. There's no, um, I don't know what do you call it. Um, there's a name for the past and plurals and, and stuff like that. But anyways... <laughs> Um, you really only have to learn the root. So, like, for example, I wouldn't have to say um, yesterday I went running. I can just say yesterday I run, right? Um, because the the, um, the the suffix on that word is already self-assigned because we already established what the time was. Um, and plurals, too. Like, if you say I have two cats, you already know it's multiple or it's plural because you've already assigned a number and you know that there's more than one. And so ASL is really nice in that way where you really you don't have to learn eight different ways to conjugate a word. You just have to learn, in most cases, the root sign for the root word. Um, and like pronouns are, are like that too. Uh, he, she, they, um, and like the gender or everything else just kind of takes care of itself. Um, there's possessive pronouns where you have an open palm, and then there's pronouns where you just point to the person, and that's basically it. We've um, hit the 15-minute mark. 15-minute mark. Okay, so you want to do the fifth animal yeah. real quick? So the last animal. Ready? I'm going to do it. The last animal. You always get to do it. The last animal. Ready? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. People are it. saying she's page is really cute. Oh, thank you. Can you say thank you? Oh, you know what? I, I okay. So th this made me think about the comment I was ser searching for earlier. Um, uh, from the Philippines. Thank you. Um, I'm really learning a lot from you guys. No, actually, that's not the one I was looking for. But hey, thanks, <laughs> Jean Picana. Um, but it was about practice partners, and so. Um, for a lot of you that have, have been struggling to find somebody to practice with, uh, both Johnny and I have been hosting weekly practice sessions mm -hmm. on Zoom uh, since April of last year. And so if you're looking for somebody to network with or maybe just find somebody that's at a similar skill level than you, uh, you are more than welcome to join our free sessions on Zoom. Um, there's a We send them out through our newsletters, and there's a link in the description down below to how you can sign up for those. And the reason why we do it through the newsletters is just to kind of have an extra layer of security to make sure that those uh, Zoom sessions are, are safe. Boom, Patty. <laughs> hey, congrats. Um, so go ahead and send Chris an email at Chris at ASL Basics. Daddy, she wants your attention. <laughs> um, and we'll get you set up with that. Somebody, somebody um, said Tiger. Mm. And the sign for tiger is actually, and mm. that's for the, oh, and that's for the stripe. So yeah, so tiger. Um, oh, raccoon, raccoon. If I remember right. Oh, uh, there, there, there's a few. There's raccoon. Oh, raccoon. I'm sorry. That's right. Raccoon. My bad. I'm thinking of panda. I think there's raccoon too. I'm thinking uh, of panda, but yeah. Usually raccoon. it's raccoon. Raccoon. My bad. 
Uh, skunk K across the head skunk. like this. Mm -hmm. Skunk. Ram. <laughs> Um, so that's with the horns. I uh, usually it's like ram. Is it ram? Or like, I can't remember. Um, like we don't use too often. Is there a way to connect if we're late to the Zoom and it gets locked out? Oh yeah. So uh, I, I I'm sorry that you missed it tonight, Taylor. Um, so the reason was why we started uh, locking them. So we keep it open from like 4:30 to 5:15. So we have like a 45 minute window for you to join. Um, but late last summer, we had somebody join in the middle of the practice session. Yeah, well, they joined in the side. middle. It was already done. The practice session was already done, mm -hmm. but we were doing the questions. And this is, we were going live and doing Zoom at the same time. But anyways, and somebody came in and when they did, if you've heard about people being hacked. And well, it, was like, a, well, it was a Zoom bomb. It was a, uh, yeah, a Zoom bomb. And somebody came in and we had a serious issue with inappropriate things being said. They kept unmuting, kept unmuting, kept unmuting. Inappropriate pictures kept popping. It was like, wow. I mean, I ended up, the only way I could end it was if I closed my laptop. And I was like, I'm sorry, guys. But I ended it immediately because it was so bad. And for me, that's a big deal for me because I don't do that. And so we had to come up we had to set up with a better security i know it's dark honey we had to set up with a better security measure as best as we could and so that was um locking the meeting like we only give a certain window and then we lock it so we can't have people like shoom, like jump in and, and stuff and like you know mess with my group yeah my I mean, <laughs> feel free to like well, I, I try to be cognizant of stuff you can e shoot me an email or yeah, maybe reach out to me on um social media um, yeah. Usually I can catch that kind of stuff, but like right during those sessions, like a lot is going on. So if I happen to miss you, I really apologize. We really want to um, have as many people uh, take advantage of that as possible, uh, because one of the hardest things is to find other people to practice with. And so we're happy to be able to facilitate for those. Yeah. Um, what's your dad saying? Oh, he says that they have a four minute lag between the video and the comments. Wow. Wow. wow, that's really that's bad. Like Usually really it's just crazy. like 20 seconds or oh, so. She just sent you an email. Who? What? Uh, Taylor said, yes, yeah, she, she goes, yeah, I sent you an email. Oh, sorry, Taylor. It was really the best night. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I, I just got home at like 4.45 and like, so ran in the door and tried to like, like set everything like, up. Uh, um, um, but oh, anyways. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, before it gets too late, because we're coming up to that hour mark, because we hit the, uh, the 50 likes, now we're at 52. We want to do the giveaway for Skillshare. So I'm going to um, set that up right now so it'll auto generate, and then you can go ahead and continue with the security measure or whatever it was that you were talking about. I wasn't. Um, I think we pretty much well covered that. Okay. Um, and then somebody asked. Um, uh, where did Thank it you go? Both so much Death Elite. Do you know what that is? I mean, uh, unless you're just talking about those that are like really uh, kind of hateful towards uh, the hearing culture, um, there is a lot of that. And um, I don't know what you know. that is. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. I don't know what she wants, but she just wants something. Come on, Dad, Dad, Dad. Okay, go ahead. But anyways, um, so. Just a really quick on the Skillshare course. Um, so this is a course that we just put out a couple weeks ago. And it's if you're just getting started learning, um, it's a great uh, launching point. Um, so it's uh, primarily focused on the alphabet. And also we go over some uh, tips and tricks as far as how you can take that learning process forward and, and to become more fluid with your fingerspelling and how to better understand other people when they fingerspell to you. Um, and then also there's some like class projects and stuff to make it a little more interactive. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is something that you can actually try out for free um, with the with the free trial. So there is a special link in the description. Um, if you aren't the winner tonight, you can go ahead and sign up for that free trial and, and try it out for yourself. Uh, but as far as for the person that actually won the course without the need of any membership uh, is. Wait, 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 wait. wait. There it is. Yeah. Geneva, Geneva Lewis. Lewis. So congratulations. Uh, so go ahead and okay, you want to help her really fast? Let's go. Um, so go ahead and let me 
do the ah uh, there it is not on the text not the text savvy one um so go ahead and email chris at chris at asl basis let him know that you won the um skillshare giveaway and then he'll go ahead and he'll get you all set up with that um or however you want to word it the 50 i i won the 50 likes you know the class giveaway or however you want to say it um so all right well bam look at that one hour on the money um Oh, look, I did not think he was going to be back in time for me to end this. Um, so, okay, well, it was good seeing, well, seeing, hearing, being with you guys tonight. Um, if you are curious and are interested in joining our um, workshop, well, yeah, I was going to talk about the uh, practice sessions on oh, Wednesdays. Yeah. If you are interested in joining the practice session Wednesdays, um, to get that link, you just sign up for his newsletter and he sends them out every Tuesday afternoon, I believe. Yeah, it um, varies a little bit, but I try to get him out. Um, about a day Tuesday. before, yeah. So you just sign up for his newsletter, and then he'll go ahead and he'll send out that link. Um, also, if you're a Patreon or if you're like part of the YouTube, I can't remember what it's called. What are they called? The YouTube, the I think it's members. members, the memberships, or anything like that. Yeah, you can go ahead and <laughs> you'll get access to that. <laughs> I know. You know, Zequil, he's going to take it tonight. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, so if you guys are interested in that, feel free to join. And then we'll see you guys next Wednesday at 5 p.m. for those of you who join the group practice session. And then at 5.45 for those who join us live. So, all right, it was good seeing you guys. Bye, wait, 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 hold on. What about being a part of the, oh, oh, somebody was curious like how to be a part of the workshop. Like if you wanted to like be a part of the workshop, oh, how okay. they do it? Um, so if well, actually, I think we'll be doing one more uh, series of giveaways for the workshop okay. next week. Um, but if you haven't won it yet and you still want to uh, join us for that workshop, um, it's it's available for free for all of our supporters, um, whether you're a, a VIP on YouTube or if you're on Patreon or if you're a member of the Beyond the Basics from our website. Um, if you're a part of any of those, then you already have free access to that. And if you're not, you know, you can go ahead and sign up and um, you'll be getting an invitation uh, next week with the Zoom link and with a little more information about what we're going to be doing. And we'll be incorporating a little bit of uh, group practice and kind of putting into practice the things that we're going to be teaching you. So um, they're a lot of fun and um, open to everybody that is uh, supporting us here on the channel. We couldn't do what we do without all of your support. So we really, from the bottom of our hearts, uh, really appreciate all of you as well. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, Bye guys.